Sean Philip from Wikimedia Canada. And Wikimedia Canada is doing uh, Aboriginal communities outreach project. And the goal is to reach uh, Canadian Aboriginal communities and to familiarize indigenous languages speakers with Wikipedia. And Sean Philip is also a member of the Sami advisory group Wikimedia Norway have. And Jon Hagel will tell you a little bit about that afterwards. And uh, this is Jon Hagel from Wikimedia Norway. He works as a community uh, manager and is also in charge of the Northern Sami Wikipedia project we have been working on since 2017. And the last person is uh, not here uh, who wanted to present. That's Eddie from Bolivia. Uh, I will do my best to be Eddie and present his slides. And um, Eddie is based, yeah, as I said, in Bolivia. And um, he works as the director of an organization called Rising Voices. And Eddie is also part of the Sami advisory group we have. Okay, so first out, Jon Hagel. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so Wikimedia Norway, we are having a project to improve the Wikipedia in Northern Sami. Uh, a lot of people don't know that Sami is actually not one language, but a language group. Uh, as you can see on the map, there are nine different languages, and ranging from two to 20,000 speakers. So a few of them are practically dead. Uh, and they're spoken in Norway, Russia, Sweden, and Finland. Uh, and out of those nine, la nine languages, uh, Northern Sami is the biggest one, and approximately 90,000 of those who speak a Sami language speak uh, Northern Sami. Uh, so, like, yeah, all the other languages are much smaller. So we're thinking of doing maybe a project in one of the smaller languages, but we were advised against it because the people who know those languages have more important stuff to do than write to Wikipedia, like they need to write textbooks for kids and, uh, and stuff like that instead. Um, and uh, the Sami languages are a, in the Uralic language family, so they're not related to Norwegian or Swedish at all. They are related to Finnish, but uh, very uh, distantly. So uh, there's no mutual intelligibility between them. Uh, and the Sami people in Norway, Sweden, and Finland have uh, something called the Sami parliament, uh, which is like a, an, you know, uh, how do I explain it? <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like the government for the Sami people. Uh, and they get uh, money from the re their respective uh, country governments uh, uh, every year, and they allocate those money to like Sami purposes. Um, so when we started our project, we decided on a two-pronged approach. Uh, the one goal, main goal is to get more contributors to the Northern Sami Wikipedia. Uh, and the other goal is uh, getting more Sami content to Wikimedia projects. And we chose this approach because um, we know that getting more contributors can be hard, so that shouldn't be the only goal. We still want to have something to show for it in case we fail miser miserably. Uh, so getting more content is also something we're doing. So, um, and on that, we often rely on institutional partners, uh, which I'll talk about here. Uh, so, from the National Library, they have something called the Sami Bibliography, which is um, uh, a collection of, you know, all books about Sami people or in Sami languages that have been released in Norway and some other countries as well. And there are actually 30,000 works in that uh, bibliography. So, um, we're uploading all of those to Wikidata, and uh, we also have um, the Norwegian Mapping Authority has, like, place names in Sami languages which we're also gonna put on Wikidata, and we've got some image materials from the National Archive, and yeah. Uh, and there's also a Sami University, uh, where all the, um, all the instruction is in uh, the Northern Sami language, uh, and so we're hoping to, like, uh, we're starting to establish uh, some good ties with them to, you know, have, hold editing courses and stuff like that. Uh, and finally, I've put the, the Sami advisory group here, which is a group of uh, experienced Wikimedians from other uh, minority language and small language Wikipedias uh, that are helping us Wikimedia Norway. Jean-Philippe is part of it. Um, uh, with, you know, various, just giving us feedback and, uh, uh, 
yeah, helping us <laughs> in any way they can. Um, so the challenges for this project, uh, there are a few. Uh, one of them is Norwegianization because uh, the Nor Norwegian government had a policy for like almost uh, 100 years or something of trying to assimilate the Sami people. Like, uh, you know, you probably know the story like uh, uh, taking kids out of their homes and putting them in foster homes or boarding schools or whatever and, you know, punish them, punishing them if they use the, uh, their nat native languages. So uh, that's been going on in Norway and Sweden and Finland as well. Uh, so we need to be, you know, sensitive to to issues relating to that, and uh, just, you know, trying to be. Oh, I, actually, as my uh, last point, I put we are not native speakers, uh, so we're coming in as outsiders, and that's sort of uh, an added challenge uh, with regards to Norwegianization because uh, you need to be, you know, sensitive to cultural issues. Uh, another is issue is uh, distance because Norway is a big country. Uh, and most of the Sami people live way up north, while we have we're based in Oslo, so it takes a lot of time to travel back and forth uh, to do, you know, meetings and uh, editing courses and stuff. And also, finally, a um, an interesting challenge that I think might be a bit unique, uh, but maybe not, is that people who know how to write Northern Sami they often get really well paid to do that, uh, to translate the government, uh, you know, uh, government websites and papers and stuff like that. So a lot of the attitudes are like, uh, okay, I want to, you know, write, but I don't want to do it for free. So why should I write on Wikipedia? Uh, so we're actually thinking we need to catch them young, like in high school or uh, university. <laughs> um, yeah, and some of the lessons we have are that we need to tap into, um, like for other people who want to uh, work on minority languages in their countries, is that you need to tap into ex existing structures uh, and using your existing skill sets. So, I mean, um, if there are institutions or organizations for uh, the native language or, uh, you know, minority languages, um, you should try to work with them as much as you can and like uh, uh, establish a good rapport there. Uh, and also you need to use your existing skill sets, by that I mean like uh, if your organization or whatever are doing a lot of glam stuff or um, yeah, uh, you need to like use those skills uh, for, for the good of the minority language as well. Like for us, the National Library and the National Archive are longtime partners of ours and you know, using them for for this project as well was just uh, a natural next step. And then I have meeting people face to face. That one's self-explanatory, I think. <laughs> and there's persistence because uh, this isn't done in a day or even a year. Uh, so you need to like, uh, you know, just uh, keep at it, even though it might seem difficult at times. So, yeah. Thank you. So uh, good day, everyone. Uh, as Astrid said, I'm uh, Jean-Philippe, a uh, volunteer from Wikimedia Canada and uh, Wikimedia of North American Indigenous Languages user group. So in Canada, we have, uh, it echoes a lot of what he said from Norway. We have around 60 uh, indigenous languages that are still have alive speakers. And it's ranging from two to 35,000 speakers. So you can see the challenges with some of the languages. Currently, we have, of, out of those 60 languages, we only have three Wikipedias that are existing outside of the incubator, and only one of those three is active, which is the Atikamek uh, Wikipedia, which I will talk about today. And most of the 60 languages are endangered because only the elders speak it and the younger generation don't speak it. So why is it important? I have a quote here from the uh, Assembly of First Nations of uh, Canada. Languages is the main tool permitting to enrich the culture, to receive, share, and pass on knowledge from generation. The key ident to identity and to conservation of the culture of a person is his ancestral language. So that's where we come in. So the project that we did with the Wikipedia, that's the name of the Wikipedia, it's Kamek. 
We started in 2013. We started in the Cree Wikipedia since Atikamek was uh, in the Cree family. I wanted to avoid the incubator for the reason that the previous speaker already talked about. So I cheated and did the, the Atikamek in the Cree Wikipedia. And the way we did it is uh, we went in a high school and the computer teacher made the students write articles in Atikamek. And just to avoid political issue, we asked the student to write about simple stuff like a chair or a table. So like that, there was no issue about uh, politics or uh, something else like that. In 2016, the Atikamek community decided that they wanted their own Wikipedia. They didn't want to be part of the Cree since they are a different culture. So we moved everything in the incubator. And then finally, last year, we were able to move out of the incubator. So here's a quote from one of the main contributors from the Atikamek. Um, He's actually a teacher in that high school. He said, this is a way to pass on ancestral knowledge using computers, and it allows to preserve traditional practices, and it is an educational tool for all. So what's need to be done to create a new Wikipedia? That was a very uh, hard work, and it takes a long time. So as he said, we need persistence and patience. So we need to have an active community of contributors. So this is a minimum of three contributors that do a minimum of 11 contribution every month. And then we need to have article, obviously. And then we need the hardest part was to translate MediaWiki, because you need to translate the interface. And some words don't exist yet in most of those languages. So as the previous uh, speaker said, the, the um, Wikipedia was not a good, way, a good place to do that. So how they did it? They went on a Facebook group, a private Facebook group, and they could chat and discuss and get consensus to get new words to, to translate things, such as categories was one of the hardest words to translate, because that's not a concept in the indigenous communities. What, what we consider, is, uh, we categorize knowledge, it wasn't a concept for them. So some advice, uh, he already said it, meet in person, and that's not to take it lightly. Because I started back in uh, 2008, I think, with the first Another Nation, and it didn't go anywhere because I was doing everything online. We created maybe three articles and translated some words, but then it died out. With the Atikamek, we went there, we met them in person, we trained them in person, and then we got the trust that the previous speaker was talking about. It's very important. Let them lead their own projects. It's not our projects. As he said, we are outsider. So we need to give them the control. We need to let them make their own rules. English Wikipedia or the French Wikipedia, where I'm from, we have our own rules. But those rules doesn't apply, don't apply to a new Wikipedia. There's five basic principles for Wikipedia. That's all. Everything else, like you need a written reference, that's not in the five basic principles. So when, when we arrived there, then we told them that they can make their own rules for their own Wikipedia. Then uh, another advice is to get support and approval from their authorities. So they have national council, they have banned government. So it's important to have approval before we go in and try to be the, the savior of their language, you know what I mean? So it's important to have their, their support. Then we need to be flexible because what we think they need may not be what they need. So for example, we went to to see another uh, nation called the uh, Inu, Inu in North, Northeast Quebec. And we wanted to do the same thing as the Atikamek, which has created the Wikipedia in their language. But then we were talking about and other Wikimedia projects. And we talk about Lingua Libre. I will say what it is in a couple of slides. And, and that's where they catch on. Or something else that the Atikamek really catch on. It's to edit the French Wikipedia and the English Wikipedia to add the names of the, the toponyms, the rivers, the lakes, the mountains, in their language, on the existing Wikipedia. Sorry, OK. So the last point, we already talked about it. So before coming here, I asked them what is important, what I should tell other people that want to do the same thing. And then I asked three different people, I got three Three different answers, now it's the same. Training, 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 and in person. So we really need to go there and train them. 
the challenges. Uh, we already talked about it, but one I want to, uh, to point out is oral tradition. We talked about it a lot in this conference, but there's nothing against oral sources in small Wikipedias. Uh, we have it in the Atikamek and it works, it works really well. They put the, no the note, they put the name of the elder, and it works. You can come see me if you have a question. Here's Lingua Libre. I will just uh, say it very fast what it is. It's just to record wor words in the native language, and then we can add it to a dictionary, or they can use it for their own dictionaries. And then another thing that we did, and, and it's just to gather momentum and get the community together, is photography contest. And you can see at the top right, we do a upload a workshop. So that is e easier for the community to take pictures and to write articles. But once they are in the Wikimedia sphere, then maybe we can get them hook and write articles. And, and it's a way to share their knowledge too, using pictures. And I think that's it. Thank you. Sorry we are over time, so I'll try to do this slide uh, super fast uh, from Latin America. Uh, as you see, there are approximately 522 indigenous people Peoples, they speak approximately 420 languages and make up around 10% of the population. Uh, there are Wikipedia projects in indigenous languages. And uh, Rising Voices ran a Wikimedia Foundation supported project, mapping project, to learn about the current state of these Wikipedia projects. There are four, four official projects and 36 projects on incubator. And these are the names of the four official um, projects and languages. I will not try to pronounce them. And I will skip to the recommendations that Eddie gave me. Sorry. Uh, and uh, what he told us was that while it was difficult to pinpoint the exact process in which these four official and the other incubated projects got started, the mapping project concluded that none were started by native speakers. Most of them were started by well-meaning people who thought that by creating a Wikipedia in these languages that uh, they would attract native speakers by doing so. And for some of the projects, non-native speakers that learn these indigenous languages as second languages were very active in the development. And I skipped one. So um, what they have been experimenting doing is creating a user group. And uh, these activities will help raise awareness and the visibility of the current projects, especially on social media. And as you see on the slide, the user group will also uh, complement the work being done by affiliates. Yes, I skipped the one too. And uh, as Wikimania is uh, going on, there is an editathon taking place in Guatemala City for the Wikivui, I hope I say that right, project, uh, which has been in the incubator project status. Uh, they received a rapid grant from the Wikimedia Foundation to run this editathon, which included some pre meeting activities and interface translation. And this is an example of activities that the user group can help uh, support, especially in country like Guatemala, where there is no Wikimedia affiliate. Okay, thank you. Um, we have more questions we wanted to discuss, so if we can go over time, we will be very happy to do so, or we can cut here. Uh, so I prepared some questions for uh, Sean, Philip, and uh, Jon Hago. So let's take the first one, uh, and I will ask Sean, Philip first, 
what is your advice on the, f the very first steps you need to take when you want to work with indigenous languages and Wikipedia? Where, where would you start? So where, where do you need to start if you want to is really to get involvement from the local community because you, you need local people, you cannot do it and you need to go in person. So my advice is to start with, to use our model because it worked for us, it's to go in the high school where the language is spoken and use the teacher uh, as a, your partner and then, and then ask the student to write content because after that, when you have a basic for the Wikipedia, some articles and the students are involved, then you, can, you have something to, to show to when you go see the national council or the tribal council, like you have something to show. If you just go with good idea and you show them the French Wikipedia or English Wikipedia, it would be over the head, like it's too much. And, they, they would, and, and rightly so, they cannot achieve the same thing. So my advice is to start small and then you have something to show and then you can expand. Thank you. It seems like we have a couple of more minutes, so we will take some more questions. Um, so, um, Jon Hagel, how do one best approach the communities you want to work with? And I think Sean Philip had some ideas, and maybe you have some more from our project. Hmm. Uh, I think a good idea to approach people are to, you know, show them what is already, like in our case, the Northern Sami Wikipedia already exists and it has 7,000 articles, which is pretty good, but uh, the activity is, uh, is very low. Uh, because most of the articles were created by uh, formerly active contributors who are not active anymore. So, but you can show them what already exists and uh, show them, okay, this is how you can contribute. You just click edit and you fix this, you delete what's wrong and, uh, you know, uh, just show them how easy it is. Uh, and in our case, it's uh, it's easier than in, uh, in Jean Philippe's case because uh, the Wikipedia already exists, so you don't have to go through all the hurdles of the incubator and you know uh, stuff like that. So, yeah. Mm. Yes. Sorry. Uh, yeah. If we use the visual editor, oh, okay. yeah. uh, I'll let you both answer. Yeah. Uh, when I'm showing people how to edit the Northern Summer Wikipedia, I show the visual editor uh, at first uh, to show them that this is how easy it gets. Uh, it's super easy. Uh, but if you want to do more advanced stuff, uh, I w you can use the source editor. Uh, but normally, I skip the source editor stuff unless they tell me that they're you know super experienced with computers or, or programmers or something like that. For uh, in the incubator, there's some challenges with the visual editor because uh, as the previous uh, speaker said, you need a prefix and there's everything else you need to teach. So we, and when we started the project, the visual editor were not implemented in the incubator, so we didn't use it. But maybe in the future we will because I think it's easier for everybody. But it creates other challenges because of the prefixes and everything else that is in the incubator. Do you have it? Actually, can I ask one more, one more question? Uh, do you have any notions about how, how people use, use it? Are, are they aware of, of the Wikipedias? How are they popular? Or, or how, how are, do you have any idea, comments on, for this? So the question was uh, if the people are already aware that there is a Wikipedia in their language, right? Yeah. Uh, so for the Northern Sami, peop Northern Sami people, um, I don't think it's very well known that there is actually a Wikipedia in Northern Sami. Uh, we were at a festival last week in Northern Norway, uh, and we had like the front page of Northern Sami Wikipedia open on a computer, and people were like, oh, there's a Wikipedia in Northern Sami, I didn't know that. And these were, you know, Sami people in, uh, uh, you know, they're all, you know, they all have a high, high standard, of living, standard of living, so they all have computers and phones and use the internet a lot, but still they didn't know. So, um, yeah, I guess we need to do some more uh, PR work as well to make it more known. 
So in our case, uh, every, everywhere we, we went, we, whichever is the Atikamek or the Inu, they said the same thing. They all know the Wikipedia. They all use it in French and or English, which, whichever is their second language. So, but they didn't know they can create their own. And uh, how we get it known, that's really through their Facebook group. Because uh, they were really, the community is all together talking in Facebook. So that's how we promoted it. And I went fast in the project, but the idea was the high school student were writing the articles, and the end goal is to use the written content so the, the kids in elementary school have some written material in their language to use. So Wikipedia will get known like that. And we, they also made uh, shows about it in the local community radio promoting. And the photography contest is actually a good, a good uh, vehicle to make it uh, known because people are happy to take uh, photographies and have the chance to win some prizes and then they get to know Wikipedia in their language at the same time. Thank you. So thank you for coming to our session and I think the next speaker is waiting. Thank you. <laughs>